Welcome everyone to the Time to Football podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about week three of the 2018 NFL season, give you our power rankings, weekly picks, fantasy football advice, and also have the opportunity to answer some questions that you guys have submitted. Hardy ho! Hey, 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 it's Fat Halperts. The Office. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Time of Football Podcast. My name is Hassan Khan. I'm your wonderful host for this show. So if you're watching the video version of this podcast up on YouTube, you might notice that some things a little different, i.e. you don't see my wonderful face on the screen. That's because we've been having some technical difficulties with the set that we film in, so we don't want to bring our camera crew out here and get that set on camera. For now, at least for this break, we're going to give your eyes a break from seeing my ugly face on screen. So, but this also gives you the opportunity that if you're watching this video on on YouTube, if you usually do that, you can realize that you don't have to watch a, a, a 30 to 45 minute video straight through you can listen to the podcast on the go if you go to the podcast app search time to football subscribe to us on there listen to us while you're driving while you're at the gym whatever it is and if you're at the on the podcast app if you want to see a video version of this podcast because we have some great graphics um to go along with it um you can go to youtube subscribe to us on there and we come out with the show every wednesday at 8 p.m so Anyways, um, I wanted to first, before we get into everything, I wanted to go ahead and say the phrase, Sex Panther. Sex Panther. So that is the key phrase for Jordan. If you're listening to this podcast, the next time I see you, um, say those words to me, Sex Panther, so that I know that you listen to this podcast. But moving along, right along, um, we kind of recap week two of the NFL season going into week three. That's what we do um, every single week on this podcast. So to kind of recap week two before we get into week three, we talk about the players of the week. Um, Every Tuesday, we come out with a video up on YouTube that gives four players that we've chosen as the players of the week. We give film breakdown of their big plays of the week and tell you why they're the players of the week pretty much. So if you had an an opportunity to watch that video, um, it's up on YouTube. You can watch the film aspect of it and see the player highlights. But let's just go ahead and get into just naming the players for you guys listening to the podcast on the podcast app. Um, First up, uh, our first player of the week is the greatest of all time, it seems like. Just kidding. That's a little bit of an overreaction. But Patrick Mahomes has been rock solid for the past couple of weeks. And this past Sunday against the Pittsburgh Steelers, 23 of 28, 82% completed, 326 yards, six touchdowns, zero interceptions, and he defeated the Steelers 42 to 37. Our second player of the week, listen, there are a lot of good wide receivers out there. Um, AJ Green got three touchdowns. Um, Adam Thielen had 12 receptions for 131 yards. I realized that. Um, but Stephon Diggs was the most well-rounded of all the wide receivers. He had a lot of receptions with nine receptions. He was up there in yardage with 128 yards receiving, and he was up there with multiple touchdowns scored with two touchdowns. Um, the Vikings did tie with the Packers. They didn't pick up the victory, but regardless, Stephon Diggs' performance had um uh, had some sort of factor in leading the Vikings to a tie instead of a loss. Our third player of the week is a defensive player, and that is the Chicago Bears linebacker. Nope, not Khalil Mack, but Danny Trevathan. So Danny Trevathan had a solid game against the Seahawks. Six tackles, two sacks, one forced fumble, and he led the Bears to a 24-17 victory over the Seahawks. The score seems a lot closer than... Um, all right. If you see the final outcome of that score, 24-17, you think that the game is a lot closer. But 
a touchdown was scored in garbage time by the Seahawks. This this game wasn't even that close. It seems like the Bears defense dominated, and Danny Trevathan had a big part in doing that. And our last player of the week for week two was a Georgia Southern prospect, Matt Breida. 11 carries, 138 rushing yards. He also had three catches for 21 receiving yards and led the 49ers to a 30-27 to victory over the Detroit Lions. So those were our players of the week for week two. Fantastic job um, to all four of those players. Um, now we're going to get into week three and kind of go into the, the storylines leading up to um, week three this Sunday. And we got to start off with probably the biggest news that broke um, on Monday. And that was that Josh Gordon is now a New England Patriot. So the Cleveland Browns, after six years of holding on to him, trusting in him, didn't release him. They had a lot of faith in him. Some sort of event occurred where they just thought, you know what, this is it. This is the last straw. We're moving on. So they fielded trade offers. The Patriots jumped up on it. They decided to trade a conditional draft pick to the Browns in exchange for Josh Gordon. So he'll be making his appearance this Sunday, actually. Um, or it's as expected, unless Bill Belichick decides to keep him out. Um, and to make the move or to make room for Josh Gordon coming onto the New England Patriots, the Patriots have released Corey Coleman, Josh Gordon's old teammate that they uh, just signed last week. Um, so Coleman's out. He's a free agent. Josh Gordon's in. He's a New England Patriots. Also, he's back. Carson Wentz will start versus the Indianapolis Colts. He was medically cleared uh, for contact by the team doctors. He can participate in this Sunday's game. Um, it's expected that he's going to start. Doug Peterson has a lot of faith in Carson Wentz that he'll be back on track to his MVP status that he was last year. So uh, Carson Wentz is now the Philadelphia Eagles starting quarterback. And also interesting news that doesn't happen often. Actually, for as long as I've watched football, I don't think I've ever seen this happen before. But Vontae Davis, Bill's cornerback, retires from the NFL, right? Which is, okay, he retires. That's fine. It's not that he retired during the beginning of the season, but he retired during halftime of the Bills and Chargers game. He decided that it, it hit him hard that he doesn't that he shouldn't be out there. That it's time for him to hang it up after 10 years in the NFL and he felt like halftime was the best uh place for him to retire. So he didn't come out for the second half. He stayed in the locker room. He just packed up his stuff. He left. Um, I don't believe a lot of people in Buffalo were happy about that, but nonetheless, Vontae Davis has made a decision to retire from the National Football League. Um, interesting news coming out of Pittsburgh. Antonio Brown originally didn't show up to um, the facilities on Monday to review game footage of this, of this past Sunday, but he did show up on Wednesday. So Mike Tomlin said that there was dis disciplinary actions taken towards Antonio Brown for not showing up on Monday. And the reason why um, Antonio Brown didn't show up, they're saying it's because of a personal matter. But what's interesting, though, is that on Twitter, someone said to Antonio Brown that Antonio Brown is only good because of Ben Roethlisberger and that Brown's stats are inflated because of Big Ben. Brown then tweeted out and he said, trade me and we'll find out. So a lot of people were speculating that when he tweeted that out and he didn't show up to practice on Monday, a lot of people were thinking he's going to be traded. Pittsburgh Steelers are thinking about it, but Tomlin shut down those rumors. Roethlisberger shut down those rumors. Uh, Brown is going to be talking to the media, addressing everything tomorrow on Thursday. Um, so we'll find out exactly what to see or exactly what happens from then on. And there's been a lot of injuries going on in the NFL as of late. Uh, Jarvis Landry is listed as questionable against the New York Jets in Thursday night football. Uh, one of the bigger injuries, though, is that Bills running back LaShawn McCoy um, cracked cartilage in his rib, which sounds really painful, um, but it's actually not as serious as breaking a, a bone, breaking a rib. Um so he just cracked the cartilage. He's in pain, but he's 
limited in practice, so they're going to be monitoring his his um, status for this Sunday against the Minnesota Vikings, whether he's going to play or not. So it'll be a game time decision um, whether or not he's going to play. So I just wanted to put it on your radar for you fantasy owners that have LaShawn McCoy um, that he's questionable. He should be questionable for this Sunday, and his status will be monitored throughout the week. Now we're going to get into our power rankings. We rank these teams 1 through 32 based off of their performances and how they're looking going into week 3. So the 32nd best team in the NFL, pretty much to say they're the worst team in the NFL right now, is the Buffalo Bills. Um, 0-2, got blown out week 1 by the Ravens, didn't look pretty against the Chargers, they're 32. 31, the Cardinals... They were number 30. They dropped down a spot because their offense is horrendous. At 30, we have the Cleveland Browns. They dropped down a spot. They used to be number 29. Um, but after some kicking woes, with it, which they got rid of Zane Gonzalez, and um, hopefully they'll have a, a better opportunity to win some more games. They almost beat the Saints, but for now they lost. They moved down to number 30. At 29, the Colts move up a couple of spots. Uh, from number 31 to number 29. At 28, the Oakland Raiders, 0-2, um, gave up a lead to the Denver Broncos. They lost. They drop a spot. 27, the New York Jets. So they were number 27 in the beginning of the season. Once they won in week one, they jumped up two spots, and now they're back down two spots to number 27. 26, the Miami Dolphins. They beat the New York Jets, so that's why they're ahead of them. Um, but they're going to stay put. I want to move them up, but I re- I can't move them up because even though they won, there's a lot of other teams that won as well. So for now, they're staying put at 26, but I really love their defense. At 25, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers started at number 31 in the beginning of the season. They jumped up three spots last week, and they're jumping up another three spots this week to number 25 after topping the defending Super Bowl champions. At 24, the Chicago Bears picked up a victory against the Seattle Seahawks. They don't move in our power rankings. They stay put just because a lot of other teams um, are winning. At 23, the New York Giants, they drop dramatically. They drop five spots from number 18 to number 23. That's because their offensive line, they, they should have one of the better offenses in the NFL, but because of their offensive line, that's the only thing stopping them. Until they get that fixed, they'll be down, um, and they're at number 23 right now. 22, the Dallas Cowboys, the team that beat the New York Giants, they move up a spot from 23 to 22. 21, the Denver Broncos, they move up, move up a spot as well from 22 to 21 after that comeback victory against the Oakland Raiders. Going into the top 20, the San Francisco 49ers won 30-27 against the Detroit Lions. They move up one spot. They were 21 last week. They move up to number 20. Um, At number 19, the Titans, their offense still doesn't look good, but a win is a win, so we got to move them up a spot. They're at number 19. At 18, the the Washington Redskins looked impressive um, against the Cardinals in week one. So we moved him up drastically in the power rankings in number 17. But then we realized after the loss to the Indianapolis Colts that they only looked good because it's the Arizona Cardinals. So we drop him down a spot. They're at number 18. At 17, we have the Seattle Seahawks. They drop a spot from 16 to 17 after losing to the Chicago Bears. 16, Detroit Lions drop a spot as well from 15 to 16. Going into the top 15, the Cincinnati Bengals continue to surge. Um, and after beating uh, essentially what was a top 10 team in the Baltimore Ravens, they move up to the top 15. Um, they moved up actually four spots. They were number 19 last week. Now they moved up to number 15. 14, the Houston Texans continue to drop. They were ranked number 12 in the beginning of the season. Now they're down to number 14. 13, the Ravens. They were 13 originally at the beginning of the season. Moved up three spots to the top 10 after a demanding victory over the Buffalo Bills. But then they moved back down to number 13 after losing to Cincinnati. 12, the Los Angeles Chargers, they stay put even though it's a victory. They, it, It's not an oppressive victory over the Buffalo Bills, so they just stay put. 11, the Kansas City Chiefs are still moving up. They move up three spots from 14 to 11. 10, the Carolina Panthers, they go down a spot after being number nine. And at number nine, we have the Atlanta Falcons. They move up two spots after beating the Carolina Panthers. 
At number eight, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they drop a spot from seven to eight after losing to the Kansas City Chiefs. Seven, the Green Bay Packers, they actually move up a spot even though they tied. They didn't win, but they tied against a top five team in the Minnesota Vikings, so they're moving up a spot to number seven. Six, the New Orleans Saints, they won, but it, it was against a, you know, one of the five worst teams in the NFL against the Cleveland Browns, and it wasn't by that much, so they stay put at number six. Number five, the Minnesota Vikings, they actually drop a spot, uh, not so much because they tied with the Packers, but because they have to make room for other teams that won, which we're going to get into right now. Um, going further into the top five, number four, the New England Patriots, they dropped two spots after losing to the Jacksonville Jaguars. They were number two, now they're number four. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles are number three in our power rankings, the third best team we have. Um, they were the top dog, they were number one, but after losing to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, they, they dropped down to number three. And at number two, the Jacksonville Jaguars. An impressive victory against the New England Patriots. Um, move up two spots. Essentially, the Patriots and the Jaguars swap spots. The Jaguars are number four last week. The Patriots are number two. And now they swap. The Jaguars are up at number two. And the best team in the NFL that we have right now, the Los Angeles Rams. They're, they're talented all over the place. Offense, defense, special teams. And they have these blowout victories and the, there doesn't seem to be anyone that can stop them right now. So they moved up two spots from number three to number one. And they're the top dog in the NFL and the best team that we have ranked in our power rankings. Now we get into our weekly picks for week three. So um, this isn't determined by us. This is determined by you, the fans. Over 600 of you guys voted in polls um, on Instagram and you guys are deciding who you guys think are going to win each game. And we just announced it here on the show. So starting off with the Thursday night game, the New York Jets versus the Cleveland Browns. 32% of you think the Jets are going to win. 68% of you are favoring the Browns to beat the Jets. And going into the Sunday game at 1 o'clock, the Saints versus the Falcons. This is kind of close. 56% of you guys are going with the Falcons at home. The Saints, 44% of you are backing them up. The Colts versus Eagles, this is lopsided. The Eagles, 89%. The Colts, 11% of you have faith in Andrew Luck and the Colts. The Bills versus Vikings, 84% are riding with the Vikings, 16% with the Bills. The Raiders versus Dolphins, surprisingly, um, 56% of you guys are going with the Raiders on the road against that tough defense in the Miami Dolphins. Um, which 44% of you guys are favoring the Dolphins. Broncos versus Ravens, 48% favor the Broncos, 52% favor the Ravens. Bengals versus Panthers, 28% favor the Bengals, 72% favor the Panthers. Giants versus Texans, 53% favor the Giants, 47% favor the Texans. Titans versus Jaguars. This is lopsided as well. The Jaguars are favored to win 82% to 18%. 49ers versus Chiefs. 33% are going with the 49ers. 67% are going with the Chiefs. The Chargers versus the Rams. Lopsided as well. The Rams, 81% are favoring the Rams. And 19% are favoring the Chargers. Cowboys versus Seahawks. This is close as well. 46% like the Cowboys to win, 54% like the Seahawks to win. The Bears versus Cardinals, you guys are giving the slight edge to the Chicago Bears on the road. 58% are favoring the Bears, 42% are favoring the Cardinals. Patriots versus Lions, this is lopsided as well. Uh, the Patriots, 81% are favoring you that are favoring the Patriots to win, and 19% have Matt Patricia beating his former team. So that'll be the Sunday night game and the Monday night game, the Pittsburgh Steelers versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 64% of you are favoring the Steelers and 36% are still favoring um, Fitzmagic and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to win that game. So we're going to get into our fantasy football advice now for the week. But before we get into that, we have something 
oh so incredible that we want to talk to you guys about. Um, and that is Patreon. So Patreon is the number one way to sponsor your favorite content creator. So it's a videographer, someone that does freelance work, podcaster, YouTuber, um, anyone, any sort of content creator, you can choose to sponsor them and the projects that they have planned to help out their brand and the projects that they have planned that they want to show you guys. So for us at Time to Football, we have a Patreon page and we've been saying this since the beginning. We don't keep any of the funds, or at least it doesn't go in my pocket. All the all the funds that you give, that you pledge towards Time to Football, it's used to help out Time to Football and further advanced projects that we have planned for you guys that you guys want to see. Um, if you go to patreon.com slash time to football, you can kind of read up on these projects. But also on top of that, we have... Um, perks for you guys. We have rewards that we give you. So there's different levels of tiers um, that if you pledge at least $3, as little as $3 a month, you get a reward for that. Um, so you can go to patreon.com slash time to football, read up on the on the on all the rewards that we have for you guys. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash time, the number two, football, Patreon dot com slash time to football now we're going to give our fancy football must starts and must sits for week three so we're doing a little bit different this week we got feedback actually from someone that said hey great content that you got this these starts and sits are really helpful but is there any possible way that you can just add more players and just three starts and three sits for each position and we're listening to that feedback because you matter to us the fan matters so uh, we're actually going to give our top 10 for each position for the week. So starting off with quarterbacks, the must-starts, I'll go off and read the list for you guys. And this is in order. Number one, Tom Brady. Two, Patrick Mahomes. Three, Aaron Rodgers. Four, Drew Brees. Five, Ben Roethlisberger. Six, Kirk Cousins. Seven, Jimmy Garoppolo. Eight, Cam Newton. Nine, Matthew Stafford. And 10, Matt Ryan. Those are the top 10 must-starts for the week at the quarterback position. And let's highlight a start of the week. Um, one specific player that we're going to highlight, that's Jimmy Garoppolo versus the Chiefs. You may think of the Chiefs as having this good defense because they've been having it ever since Andy Reid came into town. But for the past two years, their secondary hasn't been that good. With or without Eric Berry. Eric Berry is a very talented player, but with or without him, there's a lot of other holes in that secondary that they need to fix. And Jimmy Garoppolo having a good performance last week against the Detroit Lions, going up against the Kansas City Chiefs that give up the most fancy points to quarterbacks. He's a must start for this week. Must sits, the top 10 must sits at the quarterback position. Eli Manning, Marcus Mariota, Case Keenum, Sam Darnold, Dak Prescott, number six, Mitch Trubisky, Derek Carr, Joe Flacco, Ryan Tannehill, and Terod Taylor. Highlighting the sit of the week is gonna be Derek Carr versus the Dolphins. Carr was dead accurate. The last two weeks, fantasy points may not show it, but he's actually a really good quarterback, throwing over 300 yards against the Rams in week one and completing a ridiculous, I think it was like 95, 96% of his passes against the Denver Broncos. So he's still a solid quarterback. Bench him, keep him on your bench if you need to, but against the Dolphins defense that has been tough on Marcus Mariota, Blaine Gabbard, on um, Sam Darnold last week. Derek Carr is a must set for this week. Going into running backs, the must starts, top 10. Um, number one, Todd Gurley. Two, Alvin Kamara. Three, Ezekiel Elliott. Four, Melvin Gordon. Five, James Conner. Six, Dalvin Cook. Seven, Saquon Barkley. Eight, Jordan Howard. Nine, Christian McCaffrey. And 10, Kareem Hunt. And highlighting the start of the week is Jordan Howard versus the Cardinals. You could say that Tariq Cohen um, is going to be an asset and is going to be threatening Jordan Howard for his job. I think those rumors are put to rest because Howard gets at least 75% of the carries and touches in the backfield. Um, and against the Cardinals team that hasn't been looking pretty at all, Howard is a must start for this week. 
The sits of the week, the top 10. One, LeGarrette Blunt. Two, Duke Johnson. Three, Rashad Penny. Four, Javorius Allen. Five, Derrick Henry. Six, Bilal Powell. Seven, Rex Burkhead. Eight, Peyton Barber. Nine, Philip Lindsay. And 10, Jamal Williams. Highlighting the sit of the week at the running back position is Buck Allen versus the Broncos. It's not so much about the matchup that he has against the Broncos, but it's more so about he's just a touchdown vulture in fantasy football. Look at his stats, look at his rushing guards, look at the amount of carries that he's getting. Week one, only four carries. Week two, only six carries. You can't make fantasy football production or, or relevant fantasy football production with those amount of carries every single week. So if it weren't for those touchdowns, uh, he wouldn't be relevant in fantasy football. Highlighting wide receivers, the starts of the week. Number one, Antonio Brown. Two, Michael Thomas. Three, Julio Jones. Four, Tyreek Hill. Five, DeAndre Hopkins. Six, Odell Beckham. Seven, Mike Evans. Eight, AJ Green. Nine, Stephon Diggs. And 10, Devontae Adams. So those seem like must starts that you just start every single week. But we're going to highlight um, a player that's not on that list that could be a sleeper that you should start regardless. And that's Nelson Aguilar versus the Colts. So he's our start of the week at the wide receiver position for the second straight week. He's been solid. He's been getting targets. He's the number one option in Philadelphia with Alshon Jeffrey out. And with Carson Wentz now in there with a more productive offense, Aguilar is a must start. Our must sits for the wide receiver position, our top 10, one, John Ross. Two, Josh Gordon. Believe it or not, with the Patriots, just because we don't know how he's going to be used in his first game. Don't know if he's going to be limited or not. Three, Jordy Nelson. Four, Mike Williams. Five, Robbie Anderson. Six, Chris Godwin. Seven, John Brown. Eight, Randall Cobb. Nine, Corey Davis. And ten, Tyler Lockett. And highlighting the sit of the week, Robbie Anderson versus the Browns. So far, in 2018, he's only had four receptions in the last two games, including um, one reception for 41 yards. It was a touchdown in week one, but that was the only reception that he had. And then this past week, only three receptions. That's not the kind of protection that you want out of a number one receiver. And if you have an opportunity to start anyone else at a wide receiver two or a flex position, I would go ahead and do that instead of starting Robbie Anderson. For tight ends, our top 10 must-starts are 1. Rob Gronkowski, 2. Travis Kelsey, 3. Zach Ertz, 4. Jimmy Graham, 5. Jordan Reed, 6. George Kittle, 7. Kyle Rudolph, 8. Trey Burton, 9. Evan Ingram, and 10. Jared Cook. In the start of the week, for tight ends, we're going to highlight Trey Burton versus the Cardinals. He hasn't been getting a lot of targets recently, but he did get a touchdown, so that kind of tells me that Matt Nagy and the Bears offense has a little bit more trust in them, and they're going to use him more often. But also, against the Cardinals, this is a matchup that the Cardinals' defense is not that good. And Trey Burton has the potential in, in what could be a blowout to put up some big numbers in fantasy football. Our sits of the week for the tight end position. One, Jonu Smith. Two, Antonio Gates. Three, Jake Butt. Four, Charles Clay. Five, Ricky Seals-Jones. Six, Mike Gesicki. Seven, Will Disley. 8, Austin Hooper, 9, Ben Watson, and 10, Jesse James. And to highlight the sit of the week, Ricky Seals-Jones. So, for the past two weeks, he was highlighted as a sleeper by fantasy football experts, highlighted as a fantasy football slipper for the 2018 season before you even drafted him. Um, But his production hasn't been saying that. And against a tough Bears defense, a top five Bears defense, until said otherwise, go ahead and and bench Ricky Seals-Jones and pick up a streamer if you have to for week three. To start off with uh, the must-starts for the week uh, at the kicker position, because kickers do matter for the brand. One, Steven Kostowski. Two, Harrison Butker. Three, Matt Bryant. Four, Justin Tucker. Five, Jake Elliott. Six, Will Lutz. Seven, Chris Boswell. Eight, Robbie Gold. Nine, Mason Crosby. And ten, the newly signed by the Minnesota Vikings, Dan Bailey. To highlight the Start of the week, Jake Elliott. He's been painful for fantasy football owners. Trust me, I know. I feel your pain because he's on my team. But with Carson Wentz now in the in the mix of things, he should be looking pretty good. Things are looking up for him. It's positive because this team now can get into field goal range more often, can score more touchdowns, so it gives him more uh, point after attempts. 
um, after a touchdown. So Jake Elliott is a must start, at least against the Colts defense that gives up at least nine and a half fantasy points per game in 2018. Sit of the week for the kickers, one Mike Nugent, two Phil Dawson, three Jason Myers, four Ryan Suckup, five Caleb Sturgis, six Sebastian Janikowski, seven Randy Bullock, eight Brandon McManus, nine Dustin Hopkins, and 10 Kaimi Fairbairn. And the highlight, the sit of the week, we've got Caleb Sturgis versus the Rams. So this is more so because the Rams are a tough defense. I know that the, the Cardinals offense and the Raiders offense is kind of sketchy as well. Um, but in 2018, they haven't had their kickers get a lot of field goal attempts. Actually, they've been averaging less than three fantasy points a game um, whenever the Rams face opposing kickers. So Caleb Sturgis for the Chargers, he's a must set against the Rams. And defense and special teams must start. Um, the top 10, we've got one, the Vikings, two, the Bears, three, the Jaguars, four, the Texans, five, the Ravens, six, the Browns, seven, the Eagles, eight, the Broncos, nine, the Dolphins, and 10, the Rams. And to highlight the start of the week, the Chicago Bears versus the Arizona Cardinals. So I'm going to give the Buffalo Bills a week, uh, a rest this week because for the past two weeks, whatever defense has been playing the Buffalo Bills, I already said that they're the start of the week. So let's go ahead with someone else. Whoever faces the Arizona Cardinals as the start of the week and the Chicago Bears, a top five defense. Gosh, I would be surprised if they don't score at least 10 fantasy points. If they score less than that, I would be shocked. And the sit of the week, um, the sits of the week for defenses, one, the 49ers, two, the Detroit Lions, three, the Buccaneers, four, the Bills, five, the Colts, six, the Redskins, seven, the Raiders, eight, the Chiefs, nine, the Saints, and 10, the Falcons. And highlighting the sit of the week for defense and special teams, the New Orleans Saints versus the Atlanta Falcons. So it's questionable whether the Saints team um, has the same defense that they had last year. Uh, the number fourth ranked defense from last year, it doesn't seem like it, it, it's the same this year. And against the Falcons, I know that they play the Falcons tough, but so does the Falcons offense. And I believe that they're going to score a lot of points on the Saints defense. I, I I would just stay away from them. I wouldn't trust them this week. I would go ahead and, and, and sit them and stream a defense if you have to. Uh, but those are our starts and sits for week three in fantasy football. Now it's time for the last segment of the day, and that is fan questions. So we started this last week. We had a great turnout. You guys have been flooding us with these questions. So can't guarantee that we'll get to all of them this week. But um, if we answer your questions, we'll give you a shout out on air. And also, if you go to the video podcast, you can actually physically see your username on the video. So um, first question that we got is by Nary3051. It asks, do you think Mitchell Trubisky will become a great quarterback? So in the last, I'll say this, in the last five, six years, there's been two quarterbacks. Actually, I'll say three quarterbacks. Three quarterbacks that I've been very high on that they'll be successful compared to their rookie campaign going into their sophomore campaign. And that was Derek Carr going into 2015 and Carson Wentz going into 2017. And both of those quarterbacks turned out well. The third quarterback, it hasn't happened yet, but Sam Darnold in 2019, he's going to be one of the best quarterbacks for that year. Trust me. Um, For Mitch Trubisky, I didn't have that same... Um, outlook on him because it, it, it's more about the eye test and, and seeing them how the seeing how the quarterback plays. Trubisky, I do think he has a little bit of stuff that he needs to work on before he can be considered in that league with them. But um, I think he'll be in a, a, he'll be a good quarterback. He'll be great in you know with like two seasons. He'll have like a Pro Bowl season and and he'll he'll be good for years to come. Um, but I compare him more so if I had to compare him to an NFL quarterback right now, um, probably like down the statistical realm of someone like Andy Dalton, who's not a bad quarterback, but it's not like Aaron Rodgers kind of greatness. You know what I'm saying? So Trubisky, I like him. Love Biscuit. I think he's a good quarterback. Um, don't think he's one of the elite. Um, next question. <laughs> this is actually from uh, John... Castle. So if you guys, 
Um, listen to the Town Football Podcast, our NFC East analysis. John was the um, was our special guest. He's a big Eagles fan. So John underscore Castle says, oh, this is more of a statement, actually. This is more, this isn't a question, but we'll have a chance to have your statement read. He says, super early overreaction, but are we not going to talk about how smart Andy Reid looks for taking Patty Mahomes over Deshaun Watson? He looks like the MVP. You know, that's actually that's actually a good point. Um, there was criticism when the Chiefs traded up um, from the low 20s up to number tw- number 10 in the 2017 NFL draft to get Patrick Mahomes. Like, why would you do that if you're going to sit him for a year behind Alex Smith? But they did it anyways, and they passed up on Deshaun Watson. A lot of people are saying, well, that was dumb. The, 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 the Texans got to steal with Deshaun Watson, but it's actually turned out really well. And you're right, John, that um, it, it, it does make Andy Reid look really smart. He's a good coach, and, and it just shows that him and, and, and the front office of the Chiefs are just so smart and, and scouting and picking out talent and drafting them that they knew that Mahomes was going to have a breakout season. Maybe they weren't going to have or they didn't expect something like this where you have the best two games in NFL history by any quarterback. But Mahomes has been looking pretty solid for them, and I don't think they regret the decision of passing up a Deshaun and trading up to get Patrick Mahomes. Um, third question that we got is by Alex underscore Perrin 456. And it's, who do you think will go slash win the Super Bowl? So a lot of people have asked me this, and um, I'm, I I try to be as unbiased as possible, um, but I'm, I'm going to let my bias kick in a little bit. So I'm a big-time Falcons fan, and um, if the Falcons were as good as maybe like the Buffalo Bills or the Arizona Cardinals, then yeah, I would say the Falcons aren't going to make it. But the Falcons are a top-10 team. So I'm going to say on the NFC side, they'll make it because I would really love for them to go to uh, Super Bowl 53 in their home stadium. Um, And the AFC team that I got is actually the Los Angeles Chargers. And the reason I have that is because they're, I think they're a well-balanced team on offense and on defense. And uh, more so though, I I actually have a bold prediction um, that if, the Chargers make the Super Bowl, regardless of the Chargers win or not. I believe Philip Rivers is going to retire. Um, if the Chargers don't make it this year, I think Philip Rivers is going to play next year. But if the Chargers make the Super Bowl, I think Rivers is going to be like, hey, you know, I, I, even if I didn't win, I made it to the Super Bowl, lived out my dream. Um, you know, he's a family man, so he wants to spend a lot more time with his family and, um, He's been in the NFL. He's done it all. He has nothing else to prove. So um, Falcons, Chargers, to answer your question, is my Super Bowl and bold prediction. Philip Rivers retires if that were to happen. Next question is by Daniel underscore RT35. It's a fantasy football question. So you guys keep on submitting these fantasy football questions. We love them. We love answering them. Um, He asks, who should I start for fantasy? Matt Breida, Philip Lindsay, uh, Jared Cook, Doug Baldwin, Carlos Hyde, or Isaiah Crowell? Um, I'm guessing that, I don't know if he didn't give a lot of clarity on whether it's a flex position, and is that Cook or Cooks? Um, Is it Jared Cook, Dalvin Cook? I I don't know. It's not a lot of uh, clarity on that. But from what I can see, I'll go ahead and rank them um, based off of what you think. I think he's assuming Dalvin Cook. Um, so number one, Dalvin Cook, just because he's going to get the carries. Um, I know that he's probably dealing with some some pain right now, but if he if he plays this Sunday, um, start him against the Buffalo Bills. Um, and right behind that, ah man, I, a lot of these guys have have some tough matchups. Doug Baldwin, he's he's hurt for a few weeks. Is that is that? Did you mean Doug Baldwin? It says back is it backed win? I think you meant Baldwin. I don't know. We'll skip that one. Um, but Dalvin Cook, um, I'm gonna go with Carlos Hyde right after that, and then third I got uh, Matt Breida, 
four, Philip Lindsay, five, Crowell. The reason I'm not big on Lindsay is because he just has a tough matchup um, coming up against the Ravens. Um, so to, to recap all that, answer your question, who should you start in fantasy? Dalvin Cook, number one, two, Carlos Hyde, three, Matt Breida, four, Philip Lindsay, five, Isaiah Crowell. So whether that's running back, um, spot, flex spot, you decide what you want to do with that. But those are my rankings at least. Um, and let's uh, let's answer one more. Uh, this is by Ask... Oh gosh, these names are, are hard. Ask... About... Oh, okay, I'm going to try one more time. Ask about Nandu. What? I don't even know. Who do you think will lead the league in rushing and catching yards. I think he means receiving yards. Wow. Uh, I should have done research on this because I, uh, I don't, even, I don't even know. Um, rushing. I'm going to say I got to go with my gut and, and go with, even though James Conner is up there, Matt Breida's up there, Lamar Miller's up there. Mm, I'm going to go with Todd Gurley. Just the amount of carries that he's getting. I think he's going to uh, lead the NFL in, in rushing. Um, I don't think it's going to be Kareem Hunt for a second straight year. Um, and as far as receiving, who do I think is going to lead the NFL in receiving? I think it's going to be Julio Jones. Um, monster game in week one. Had an all right game in week two, but um, just the amount of targets and receptions that he's going to get um, could be Julio Jones. But also up there, I've got... Um, Stephon Diggs, I think he's going to be up there. Um, also, Antonio Brown, if, if, if everything works out. I know he hasn't had the best you know, past two games. But um, to answer your question, who do I think will lead the league in rushing? Todd Gurley. Who do I think is going to lead the re- league in receiving? Julio Jones. Wow. Guys, by the, uh, by the looks of it, I think that's it. We we appreciate you joining us for the, for this podcast the the first ever week three twenty eighteen um, podcast in time football history. It's the first ever because it's the only one that we'll ever do. So um, we appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, just gonna go with a little bit of a. Uh, Plugs right here again. Patreon.com slash time to football. If you want to help support time to football, um, follow us on Instagram. So most of this content content is based off of our interactions with you guys on Instagram. So weekly polls. Um, we didn't mention this earlier, but if you get all sixteen games correct when you vote on time to football's Instagram, um, then you can reach out to us. Um, after this week say hey we picked all 16 games correctly and we'll give one of those people that picked all 16 games correctly we'll send them a free t-shirt so it's actually pretty cool that you're going to interact with us play a game see if you can get your 16 and 0 for the week and we'll send you a free t-shirt um, but also um, if you're watching this video on youtube again go to the podcast app subscribe to this on there rate and review this podcast give us five stars help a brother out Leave a nice review, help a brother out. But if you're listening to this podcast app, go over to YouTube, subscribe to us on there. That's where we come out with video content throughout the week, not just Wednesdays. Um, we come out with stuff on on Tuesdays, uh, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Those are our posting days throughout the week. So we appreciate you guys again for joining us. And uh, best of luck to you in fantasy football in week three. And... Uh, and, and, uh, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll just stop right there. Take care.